Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. Given the modest popularity of the first version of this six-way scanning digital voltmeter on a LED and keyboard, I thought um, I would develop it slightly further. And I'll first go through this setup here before you. Over here, of course, is a battery pack, USB battery pack, providing 5 volts. There's an interference suppression circuit here, which is of my own design. And um, you can uh, access a video regarding that here. And over this section here, you've got a voltage divider, which divides 5 volts down to 6 equal steps. Over here on the right hand side there is the Arduino Nano and of course the actual LED and keyboard. Now the development I've made on this is relatively minor but it's surprising how complicated even minor things can become. The modification I've made is regarding you know how this six-way digital voltmeter, scanning voltmeter, scans in pairs, that is three pairs of voltage inputs? Well, the modification I've made is that you can actually um, override that and select manually one particular pair out of the three. So you've effectively got three push buttons that can select any one of the three pairs. Now I'll plug it in and uh, and then I'll zoom in on the board and show you exactly what I mean. Right, that's plugged in and working. Let's go to a zooming in. Okay, sorry about the break, but I always think it's better to come off camera in zooming in. It um, makes us all feel less seasick. Anyway, so this is now a close-up of the LED keyboard and the first three buttons on the left hand side will select a different pair. It doesn't matter what pair is showing um, actually on here because it tends to sequentially go through pair one, pair two, pair three. Now, at the moment it's on pair one, no, it's shifted to pair two. If I want to actually go to pair one again, I push on the first left hand push button and you can see the first pair flickering. Um, the display is flashing very slightly. I don't know whether that's picked up on the camera. And you're going back to the first pair of uh, voltage readings. Now I let it, uh, if I release my finger, it will continue after a timeout on to the next pair. And um, slight pause, and there we are. We've gone to pair three. Now, as you can see, it's still on pair three, and it will change any second now back to pair one. If I want to look at, uh, let's say, pair three, I go to the third button from the left hand side there and you can see the third pair flashing and the display is displaying the voltage readings for the third pair. Release my finger and the timing circuit will then restart and go to the next um, scanning position which should be pair two. And there we are. So I can go from now from that pair two I can look at pair one and pair three and I wait for it to shift to say pair three which it will do which is the next in the sequence and there we are now I can look at pair two and pair one I think this um, adds to the applications a little bit in the sense that you can um, at will manually look at any particular voltage 
pairs. And I think that's a slight advantage. I'll go on to, um, I've obviously produced the script for this. The script will be included uh, in the description and that will take you through to a P Cloud location where you can uh, download uh, the script yourself. The previous script will still be there. This script will be called um, whatever it is too and the previous one will be called one. Welcome to the sketch regarding manual push button control of the LED and keyboard. First of all, um, I managed to tidy up the code a little bit. Personally, I find the um, description for variables, which are similar to um, int32 underscore t or uint8 underscore t, that sort of reference, to be a little confusing when code gets complicated. It has its place, but personally I've, I prefer the simplicity of not including them. So I've reconfigured the, the, um, the coding here to um, uh, make it as simple Arduino basic as possible. Right, to begin with, um, the, the code itself is best described in the first version of this sketch um, and a link to that video will be over here, just above the picture now. Right, well, I've included to the coding here three variables, uh, three byte-wide variables. The first is the J here, second is value, and the value replaces those underscore variable nomenclature descriptions which I just described. And the final byte here is called buts, abbreviated from buttons. Now having moved down to my new subroutines, the variable buts contains the, you know, whether you've pushed button S1, S2 or S3. But let's say, for example, you've pushed button S1. Uh, it'll bring you to this subroutine here. And incidentally, the new subroutines I've kind of prefixed with, again, four asterisks at the beginning. And if I go down to the end, you see four asterisks at the end there. But let's go back up to switch one. And this routine is identical whether you pushed S1, S2 and S3. So as soon as the um, buts contains the switch S1, it'll move to this subroutine. And the first thing it hits is another subroutine, which is called show first pair. And as the name suggests, let's go down to show first pair, which is here, show first pair. So that's the subroutine that it calls. And all it's doing there is turning on the first two LEDs here and then going on to reading the um, appropriate inputs on the nano and presenting that um, voltage, though those two voltage re readings on the display here and here, left and right. And once it's finished doing that, it returns back to switch one. So um, when that's been called, it then moves on to this, which effectively then switches off those two LEDs here and here. So the next routine effectively switches those two LEDs on, and this routine here switches those two LEDs off. And then it finally ends up with the timer being reset and that is the timer that sets the time uh, interval between switching from one pair to the next pair. 
Um, and that's true for the other two button presses. Uh, I've tried pressing um, simultaneously, uh, two buttons simultaneously and three buttons simultaneously. That does not upset the system. So um, that seems to be quite secure. And the reason why these LEDs, even though they've been told to switch on and then subsequently switched off, kind of flicker and flash, is the fact that the whole routine is a loop within a loop. And um, because it's been told to switch on at one moment within one loop and then off at another moment, you tend to get a flickering effect. You could make that a solid indicator, but that would end end up with complexities of adding flags that, that you would have to set and unset. And as I'm trying to, I've tried to keep this code as simple as possible, primarily for me to understand, let alone anybody else, I've stayed with it and it seems to work quite well. Oh, I've just remembered that I'd like to add one or two other things that I've changed. This is within the loop and outside of my um, manual override button bit of code that is in the loop itself. The first thing that happened is we went into a delay. Well, a conventional delay, Arduino delay, means that the system absolutely grinds to a halt. Well, I wanted to get rid of that, so I've elected to go to a refresh period which is based on a dynamic delay. So that's the first thing, so that the um, Nano continues to do housekeeping operations whilst the delay is going on. The next point is down here. This is in the first case 10. I've renamed these cases because I felt that I might be altering them and I would need to incorporate a case within a case. And of course, if you number cases just one, two and three, you can't do a case 1.5 or 2.5. It has to be, for example, 2, 4, 6, 8. You, know, you need to have a facility to code between the cases if, you, if you're making alterations. So that's what I did. Anything else to say? No, I think that's about it. I have to say, I find this little board quite a competent device. And I'm sure as time goes on, I probably think of one or two other additions to the software that will that will help this be um, you know, more relevant to other applications. Anyway, I hope you found that of interest. This is Beamer signing out for now.